Good morning, Pine Island United Methodist Church. Uh, welcome to worship today. Want to begin by uh, lifting up a few announcements. Uh, first, uh, you're in for a real treat today. Um, Kathy Rose is going to be bringing our message today uh, on prayer, and it is just awesome. Uh, you're going to love it, and uh, she's going to lead us into a season of prayer uh, for our church. Um, our leadership team. We'll be meeting this Tuesday night, uh, October 20th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this will, as always, uh, or has been always for a while now, uh, going to be on Zoom. Uh, and the link for that is on our website, pineislandmethodist.com. Want to uh, let you know about a couple of things that are going to be happening, uh, or that have been happening. One, we have been have formed an in-person team. Uh, in-person worship team uh, to begin develop policies uh, for the time when we return to in-person um, worship and they have been meeting every week for about four weeks now and will continue to do so uh, after they are de develop policies and those policies and that plan is to, is approved by leadership team and the leadership team uh, designates a time for us to um, begin thinking about uh, resuming in-person worship. We'll begin training volunteers, recruiting and training volunteers. Uh, we'll be conducting practice runs uh, and we'll be ready to go whenever the leadership team makes a decision to resume in-person worship. And I'll be just talking about that in just a minute. The leadership team will be making uh, decisions about uh, about after November 1st on this Tuesday at that leadership meeting that I just announced. Uh, and following that meeting this Tuesday, the congregation will be getting a, a first letter, probably of at least uh, three letters, uh, beginning to prepare us for that time. I want to stress that we do not have a date for resuming in-person worship yet. Uh, but we are planning for that time. I know that it's been a long time since we've been able to do that, and we're all looking forward to it, uh, but we want to do it uh, at a time when it's going to be safe, and so we're going to be con continue to talk about that in leadership this week, and we will keep you up to date of all the developments. One of the things that uh, we will be doing um, in, over the next few weeks is um, preparing to do what uh, we've done the last two years, uh, which is Operation Christmas Child, and that is done through Samaritan's Purse. And it provides gifts and personal items for children at Christmas time, as well as a presentation of the gospel message of Christmas. And the women's ministry is mobilizing to pack boxes. Uh, and we need uh, a $9 donation. Uh, to go with each box, and so if you'd like to help with that, uh, when you make your gift to the church in whatever uh, way that you do that, that you would designate uh, however much you would like to, to go for that $9 per box. You'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks, but um, you can continue, you can, can begin to uh, send in those donations. You can call Muriel Pletcher uh, for more information, maybe to offer your help. Uh, and the number is right there on the screen. It'll also be in our weekly um, email update and on our website, the very front page. If you just scroll down through the news, uh, all of this information will be there as well. And so again, we welcome you to worship. We thank you for being here and we pray for God's leadership as we worship together as a community today. Thank you. Let's worship. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to online worship at Pine Island United Methodist Church. Would you please join me in a moment of prayer as we begin our worship service? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for bringing us all together this morning. And we ask that you would please open our hearts and our minds 
so that we can hear your voice clearly this morning and help us to calm ourselves and forget about the outside world just for a brief time as we fully engage in worshiping you. And we love you so much. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm wanting you to move. When you don't part the water, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answer As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you Truth is you know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen so when all things be my life and breath, I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm wanting you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust. Welcome. Do you know the big people today, they're going to be learning about prayer in the sermon. But we talk about prayer and we say, well, it's a conversation with God. But the thing of it is, it's not like, please pass potatoes. Okay, I'll pass them when I get done taking a helping for myself. God doesn't answer that way. Not very often. 
But how does he answer? Well, this book is going to give us some answers to that. It's by Mark Batterson and his daughter, Summer Batterson Bailey. God speaks in whispers. Big sound, little sound. Where in the world is God's voice found? Can you hear it crashing in the waves or in the echo from a cave? Do you hear him when a bird chirps? Or how about when your big sister slurps? Can you hear him on top of a mountain? Or maybe from the drinking fountain? Do you hear God's voice when you're feeling sad? Or maybe when you're just a little mad? God speaks through the stars as they shoot through the sky. God speaks in whispers, as soft as a sigh. Why is God whispering so you barely hear? It's really quite simple. He wants you to come near. Sort of like Grandma, who gives you a hug or tucks you in bed all nice and snug. God whispers down deep to the depths of your heart. I've been with you from the very start. God speaks through his word so you know what is right. God speaks in dreams by day and by night. God speaks through nature like a big blue glacier. God speaks through family and friends and so much more, sometimes right in the middle of a chore. Just like waves that speak for the ocean, or friends who make quite the commotion, God points the way for you to go. God whispers the things you need to know. He says what is true, that you can be you. Even in all of your hullabaloo. Late at night, after you close your eyes, and long before it's time to rise, God is present and God is waiting. God is even recreating. So when you wake up to a world that's spinning, jump out of bed. Get dressed and start grinning, because God's whisper is in your smile, a smile even bigger than a crocodile. Some days are filled with lots of fun, like running and jumping and playing in the sun. Mom tickles your tummy and makes you wiggle until you let out a great big giggle. But even on days that aren't so good, days when you don't feel heard or even understood, your feelings, they matter, even if they're mixed up like old pancake bread. God is speaking rain or shine. God is loving all the time. Remember that God is still here and there, listening to every single prayer. But above all else, know this is true. God is singing all around you. And what he is saying in that voice still and small, you and you and you are my favorite of all. Have a good week and listen for God's voice. You may hear it when you least expect it and use your smile to help someone else hear God's voice. But before we begin that week, let's begin it the very best way of all. Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our friend. Thank you so much that we can be a friend to others. Thank you for talking to us in so many ways. Help us to listen to you. Help us to give those we love a big smile and help them to hear about God's love too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Have a good week, guys. Please join us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, through the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to come together while apart. We thank you for your watch care over us. We thank you that you have a plan in all of this and that uh, our desire and our task is to follow through with what you lead us. We ask that you would Bless those who are unable to be with us today for whatever reason, those who are sick, those who are uh, downtrodden, who are feeling uh, left out and feeling uh, uncertain about the future. We know our future. We know our future is in you. And so help us as we move into this new normal that will be our life, that we will recognize that through it all, you are with us, you are our God, and you will keep your promises to us. Um, we thank you so much for sending your son to die for us. And 
we ask in his name um, that you hear our petitions as we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Rachel's heart. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You're very welcome. Thank you. Today's reading is Psalms 139, 16 through 18. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Good morning. I'm Kathy Rose, and I'm the prayer champion here at Pine Island United Methodist Church. Today's sermon is Lord, Teach Us to Pray, based on Luke 11, 1. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Today's reading is from Psalm 139. And it emphasizes how very, very important we are in God's eyes. He saw us before we were born. His thoughts about us are precious, and we are reassured when we wake up, God is still with us. The disciples who were close to Jesus day after day could talk to him, laugh with him, walk with him, were even close enough that they felt comfortable arguing with him. But they only asked him to do, teach them one thing, how to pray. They heard Jesus speak with authority. They watched him heal others, drive out demons, teach others, feed them, help others to understand God's word. They saw how he obeyed God's word and fulfilled God's law in spirit and in truth. Jesus helped the disciples and others to see how to live their lives in the real day-to-day -day world, how to fulfill God's law in an imperfect world. And Jesus' actions showed the disciples that everybody matters, the leper full of sores, the widow who only had a mite to give. But most important of all, Jesus stopped all these good things to do something even better. Jesus would go off to pray. And when he came back, the disciples saw renewed energy, renewed purpose, renewed compassion and caring and love. Bottom line, when Jesus went to pray, he came back on God's wavelength, God's timeline following God's agenda and God's purpose for his life. So the disciples asked Jesus to teach them. He didn't ask them to teach them how to preach or how to lead or how to make disciples. They wanted to know how to pray. Had they been raised with prayer in their life? Yes. Were they taught pray prayers? You bet they were. A prayer for entering the temple, a prayer for leaving the temple, a prayer for getting up in the morning and going to bed at night. Prayers for meals, for high holy days, funerals, on and on. Yes, they knew prayers to say. What they wanted to know was how to pray. 
when you are exploding with awe at God's creation, how do you pray? When someone has shown you a kindness, how do you pray? When your heart is filled with sorrow, how do you pray? When you are filled with love or awe or wonder, how do you pray? When you are seeking God or just want to talk to him or are scared or hurting, how do you pray? When you want to know what God wants you to do, when you want to follow God's purpose for your life, when you feel all alone or abandoned, how do you pray? When you feel in a deep, dark pit or on top of a mountain rejoicing or need healing or just want to thank God for everything, how do you pray? The disciple had learned lots of form prayers, but now they wanted to know how to pray from the heart prayers. Somehow they knew that when Jesus was going off to pray, he was praying from his heart, and they saw the difference it made. When you want to tell someone you love them, you know there are only so many I love you cards that you can send to them before your loved one wants to hear you say it in your own words because your own words make such a difference. God wants to teach us to pray because he wants to be more than a greeting card in our lives. He wants to renew the connection he had with us before we were born. He wants us to understand prayer. But even more, he wants us to understand that friends communicate. They talk openly. Friends can express happiness or their relief or their unhappiness, and their friend will still be their friend. God is that kind of friend, and it's you and you and you and me that he wants to be friends with. So where does this prayer conversation begin? Why not begin where the, prayer, where the disciples did? Ask Jesus to teach you to pray. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. We hear the word prayer and a dialogue starts up in our mind. We don't pray enough. We're too clumsy at praying. We aren't sure what to say. I'm saying the same words over and over and over. I don't pray long enough. I don't use the right words. I'll never be the prayer that X is. That dialogue comes from within us. But you can bet the enemy would like to make sure you hear it over and over because Satan doesn't want your prayers to defeat him. And that dialogue, it stops now. Every prayer is a calculated risk. Did you ever think about that? Every prayer is a calculated risk, but not for you. When we ask in faith, we are not risking our reputation, but God is risking his reputation. He is the one who told us to ask, to seek, to knock, and he is the one who promised to give what we ask for to show us when we seek, and to open the door to blessings and answers when we knock. Prayer changes everything from the inside out. Do you have stuff bothering you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, the stuff may still be there, but your perspective will change. Prayer can change what we see or help us to see it more clearly. Let God show you how he sees it. Not sure what to pray about? <laughs> I've been there. So many things are happening to me, to my family, my friends, our community, the world. What do I tackle first? Ask. Seriously. 
ask God what or who he wants you to pray about. He may want you to pray about the whole world situation. Or he may want you to pray about your five-year-old granddaughter who just started kindergarten and is still really scared. Both prayers are honored in God's sight. Is God even listening? I mean, you've got all these prayers pouring in. Is he even listening? Yes. Yes, he is. Are we? We need to get into God's presence. Some people just slip right in. Me? I've got six to-do lists running through my brain, and I'm anxious to let God know what he needs to do. What I am still learning is to sit my bottom down, calm down, and remember, I am not here to give God my to-do list and ask him to bless it, but to ask him what he wants me to do. God's presence. You know, it's a big church phrase. And it can sound really overwhelming. And yet we're told, get into God's presence. What it really means is what Jesus was talking about when he said, go into your prayer closet and pray. In other words, don't let all the stuff in the world don't let the kitchen floor that needs mopping, the clothes that need fold, don't let those things interfere. Focus on God. And there are a lot of reasons why it makes sense. The best plans and the best to-do lists are birthed in the presence of God. His ideas can change the course of history. Our biggest problems are only solved in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit will reveal things that can only be discovered when we're focused in on God in his presence. When we are in God's presence, we realize that God is way bigger than our problems. Sometimes we put God in this little tiny box of what we think he can do. Get rid of the box. Ask God to show his all-powerful, all-knowing self. We have to trust that he really does have good plans for us, plans to build us up and not to hurt us. Are you still stuck? You're not sure? Is it okay for me to pray for this? What a, I'm asking for this. Go back to the Bible. Just calm down. Go back to the Bible. When you start reading... A verse or verses may jump out of you. You may have read that same passage 15 or 20 times, but suddenly you are seeing this verse from a completely different point of view. That's a God thing. Start praying. Words or phrases that may have been nice before now fill your spirit. It may be a word of assurance, a promise, a word of comfort, a different way to solve a problem. The verse may even, in so many words, tell you to back off. God's got this situation. There were times when God's word told me to get my act together that he expected better of me than this. Many people, myself included, <clears throat> have found that our prayers are more effective when we are praying scripture. When we choose to pray one of God's promises, we can pray with the holy confidence because God told us, my word will not come back to me empty. When we stand on God's word, God stands by his word. I'm kind of new at this whole prayer thing. I don't think God wants me on his prayer team. What God wants is to favor you with his presence in your life and in your prayers. 
He doesn't give the gift of prayer to a select few. The gift of prayer is for us all. Jesus told us, I stand at the door and knock. He won't come barging in. He won't shove praying in your face. But if we open the door, he will come in. He won't turn and walk the other way. He won't abandon us. He will be our friend. Yes, he does want you on his prayer team. There's a verse in Matthew 17 that says, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, if you have a pen or a pencil handy, just make a little bit bigger period. That's the size of, size of a mustard seed. When I look at a seed, whether it's a mustard seed or a dream from God, I have a hard time imagining what it will become. When we first get serious about praying, our faith may be super small and it may not look like much, but we never know what it will become. To begin a prayer life or to expand it, just start. Even if they're small steps, if they are going in the right direction, God rejoices. Our job isn't to worry about the size of our steps. The Lord can expand the size of our steps and shrink our worries and fears and problems. God doesn't measure things the way we do. Remember from Psalm 139, we are precious and awesome in God's sight. In God's eyes, our small prayers are already doing big things. In Zechariah 4.10, the Lord says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Not football games, basketball games, not even the Olympics can cheer louder than the rejoicing of God and his angels. <clears throat> that little bit of faith that puts its trust in God can go a long way. Our prayers are like planting seeds. Each prayer plants another seed into the ground. They may seem to disappear but it is in the ground drawing strength and nutrition. The ground we plant our prayers in are the Lord's hands. When we pray, we put our prayer into God's hands. The Lord told us, I will never leave you or forsake you. And that includes our prayers. We can't make things grow. God's job. But we can plant and we can water and God will, in his time, fulfill his promise to give us a harvest. Your prayers will eventually bear fruit. They can bear fruit forever because their roots go deep into the soil of God's hands. Are we going through a famine right now, spiritual or relational? financial, need healing, where we wonder if the harvest will ever come? Will we ever see an answer to our prayers? Take the Lord's advice. Keep planting, keep praying, keep obeying, keep giving and loving and serving because he will send a harvest of blessings in his time, in his way. God is never early, and God is never late. God is always right on time. May you have a timely week this week, and may the Lord bless you all and keep you safe.
As you go from this place, may God go before you to defend you. Come behind to protect you. And go beside you to, be to befriend you. Come beneath you to uphold you. Rest above you to bless you. And dwell within you to comfort you. Amen. 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 And now we're all going to join together and sing, Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. With cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with love. Bind us together with love. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 <laughs>
Thank you.